Welcome to Liz Talk About It, I'm Sheena. And I'm Tamara. And I'm... <laughs> she's, she's looking at me like she's possessed. <laughs> like nostrils flaring, eyes wide, like what is going on over there, woman? I don't know. Okay. Should we just start all over again? No, you just continue. Tell me what we're talking about today. Exorcism. Because <laughs> you're possessed. Like, thanks. Today we're talking exes. Hey, I was close. I was totally close. Exorcism and exes are the same thing. <laughs> Although, that's the myth. It's not the same thing for lesbians. Apparently, all lesbians hang out with their exes after they become exes. They become BFFs, like forever. Mm. And if you watch any TV program about lesbians, it seems to be true. Like... I'm pretty sure everybody in the L word had dated the other person at some point or another. Mm-hmm. Except maybe Shane, and I don't think she slept with most of the, the chicks in her actual circle. I don't know, we need to go find Alice's little map thing. It's true. Okay, so the myth that lesbians are always friends with their exes. Yes. Why does this exist? Is it true? Isn't it? I can't even conceive why you would want to be friends with your exes. Well... I found a study which says that people who stay friends with their exes are either psychopaths or narcissists. Oh, wow. Yes. So we're just going to jump right in there. So where does the study come from? It was a study done last year by Mogilski and Welling, and it was staying friends with an ex. Sex and dark personality traits predict motivations for post-relationship friendship. Basically, what the study says is that people who stay friends with their exes are well, obviously, after they've broken up, they stay with it, them for strategic reasons. So there's always an underlying something for it. And usually that is, you know, self-serving. Did they look at lesbian relationships or, or just hetero relationships? I have no idea. I can't really find any information on that. But there are, I think, a, quite a few reasons why lesbians stay friends with the exes and it's all to do with women being women mm, i think you're right i think that the study was probably conducted by heterosexual like uh, on heterosexual couples because the thing is we make friends we collect people we do uh, women mm. right so as women we tend to collect woman friends okay so here are some reasons why lesbians are not psychopaths or narcissists <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> well, some may be. Alright, so tell us. Okay, so firstly, women forgive a lot more easily. We do? We do. Because I've seen some reading on this, so just like, bear with me. Hang in there. Okay, I'm hanging. Women get... <laughs> She's holding my boob. I can't believe you just told everybody that. <laughs> okay then. Fine, no more boob holding. <laughs> I'm listening. Okay. So women will get... Really angry, very, very angry, but they're much more likely to digest and after a while forgive. Because women. Than men? Yes. Fascinating. Is this like for real? For real, yes. Was totally. this a study? Not a study, it was just like a thing I was reading about why lesbians tend to stay friends with women. Okay. Well, with women that they have had relationships with. Okay. Okay. Because. Women tend to be much more community creators than men do are. It's so, true. you know, you'll tend to want to continue having a relationship with another person and keeping the peace as part of that. Okay. Okay. The number two reason why lesbians are not psychopaths is that I think this these types of studies are done or Consider heterosexual relationships or relationships that are between people of different um, sexes, genders, whatever. Okay. And I think when you have um, two women, it's much easier to stay friends because you're two women versus trying to keep a relationship going between a man and a woman. I think because there's commonalities, there's yes. just areas of interest and such. Which yeah. overlap more perhaps with women, and mm. because you were in a relationship, you know what you've got in common. I mean, you had to have something in common to be in a relationship in the first place, and those commonalities don't go away. Whereas, 
I wonder sometimes if heterosexual relationships aren't often just m- much more driven by sex and less about commonality. Mm-hmm. And I think mixed company friendships, even even not not even sexual relationships, I don't think are as enduring or as tight. And I do know that you do get men and women who have been friends forever, but I don't know if they. I think the, it's an exception rather than the rule. I don't think they have got the same endurance as relationships of people who identify at least with the same gender. So lesbians aren't psychopaths, for the most part. I mean, I'm sure there are some lesbian psychopaths, but that's a whole other podcast. Okay, so the number three reason... No, there's a number three reason. Is that women are far more likely to talk about their feelings. To death. We talk about our feelings to death. I am so overfelt. Tell me about it. <laughs> that's so funny. So women tend to vocalise when they're upset. So they're much more likely to be upset, talk about it, and they cope with their feelings in that way. Because we do that, though, isn't there an innate thing that we understand what's going on, understand what we're feeling, rather than just feeling this thing that you can't necessarily name? Mm. And so because you understand what you're feeling, you can work through it, process it, and fix whatever's causing the problem. Mm. I think so. And I think part of it is also that if you're in a relationship with a woman, a sexual relationship, there is, like, the odds are that you've had a very close emotional relationship before that or Mm. during it. And I think cutting that part of the relationship is a lot harder than cutting the sexual part of the relationship. Okay. So you've cut the sexual part, but that person who you relied on for emotional support or who you know gets you... Who you shared your deep, dark secrets with. So why um, get rid of that relationship just because you're no longer having sex? Okay. Well, that makes sense. Yes, and I think that's completely, like, healthy, really. Why shut off someone just because of the sex? Okay. Maybe but the biggest I went to number C reason why women are not psychopaths. We're at number four then. No, I'm talking about that last one. I think it's oh. probably one of the best reasons why. Um, you can't say women are psychopaths based on the fact that they stay friends with their no. exes. No, I don't okay. even know if you can say that about Hit men. People. Oh, yes, because... Sure, you do get people who are psychopaths and maybe they're much more likely to stay friends for ulterior motives, but surely people who have healthy attitudes towards their feelings and others. Can I also say, I think we're very, very forced to label people psychopaths, sociopaths, (laughs) narcissists, narcissists. OMG, but narcissist is the latest psychopath. I cannot believe you just said OMG. Because I wanted to say the other thing, but then I decided not to. Okay, but the the point is, I think we're very fast to label people these things, right? Mm -hmm. Actually, I think if you spent time talking to people for the most part, you'd find that not everybody's a psychopath. I think there are people that don't have the same views as you, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're wrong. It just means that they're different. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure you can still find commonalities. Mm -hmm. I say that, and as I'm saying that, I'm thinking about this one or two women which I just will never find commonalities with. But then I think about the 350,000 other women who I do have commonalities with, even if I don't necessarily believe exactly what they believe. Mm. But, like, you know, I think the fourth reason, (laughs) I think it's the interconnectedness of women. Okay. Okay, so, or even just the interconnectednesses of relationships. So... You know, you're friends with... You're dating Sarah. No, I'm not. I'm married to you. <sighs> Hypothetical you is dating Sarah. Okay. Okay. Is and Sarah and I happy? <laughs> no. You're about to break up. Oh, darn. <laughs> but you'll stay friends. So great news. Oh, good. Do I like Sarah enough to be friends with her? Apparently. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So you're friends with Sarah. Did we have LBD? <sighs> Possibly. All right. So you're friends with Sarah, Mm -hmm. and because you're friends with Sarah, you have now also friends with Meg and Joan. Okay? Why? Because Sarah's friends with him. Yes. Uh. But during this relationship, you guys have all become quite close. Are Meg and Joan a couple? No, they're just like two (laughs) random (laughs) friends. I'm trying to understand. It doesn't matter if they're a couple. Okay. 
All right, okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. All right. Okay, but now you break up with... Well, I think Megan and John would make a good couple. Okay, so you break up with Sarah. Uh, now... You break up with Meg. I think Meg's hot. So you've broken <laughs> up with Sarah because you're boning for Meg. Right. Okay. And, but now you're very sad because... I realise I'm a cheating scum. <laughs> <laughs> because... You're, it's going to be kind of awkward being friends with Megan and Joan if Sarah's around. So, okay. people who you become close to, you can no longer be friends with. Right, so you stay friends with your ex so that you can stay friends with your ex's friends. Yes. Okay. Or well, it's I'm just easier. Sure we could have done that faster. <laughs> <laughs> but alright. So, write into us at <laughs> podcasts at thelesbiantalkshow.com. It's been a, a great ride. I don't even remember what our topic was. What were we talking about? What <laughs> <laughs> about lesbians who stay friends with their exes? Yes. Right, it's the myth. But we just you in four eloquent points just proved the theory. Yes, I think it's the, I think the myth is probably true in this case. But if you have broken up with your girlfriend or your wife or whatever, and you're no longer friends with her, it's okay. I don't think it's always true. I think it's very dependent on the person in the relationship and what actually happened in the relationship for it to break up. Because oh yes, because if it was something big and huge, exactly. Like like if I was cheating, cheating on <laughs> who was I in the relationship with Sarah? Sarah? If I was cheating on Sarah with Meg. I totally wouldn't expect Sarah to be friends with me. Am, am I saying the right names? I'm you are. So I'm actually <laughs> about to fall over in surprise. Because I'm remembering names. Yes. Props to me. Because well, Sarah's so hot. Meg. I mean Meg. So. <laughs> <laughs> Dawn. I almost said it. I almost said it right. Okay. But yes, no. I, I, I think it's probably often the case, but not always the case. No. And that's totally cool. And this has been the most ridiculous podcast I think we've done today. And we've done some interesting ones, including, like, lesbians or cat ladies. You can find this show and all sorts of other fun, fantastic shows by looking for The Lesbian Talk Show on iTunes, Podbean, and Stitcher. We Don't have- forget to rate us and subscribe, particularly on iTunes, because what happens is it ranks us higher on the charts, and then people can find us more easily. Also, if you write pretty nice things to us, then I take screenshots and send it to the podcasters and everybody gets very happy and excited and Andy makes woohoo noises. And then don't forget to share this podcast with all your exes. Yes, because we're friends. Thanks. I'm Sheena. And I'm Tamara. And this has been ridiculous. And we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. Welcome to Let's Talk About It. I'm Sheena. And I'm reading. <laughs> And this is tomorrow, and she's feeling pressurized because she hasn't finished her research yet for this podcast, and I'm putting pressure. Somebody's being murdered next door. We need the exorcist. <laughs> I can't believe you told everybody I grabbed your boob. Mm-hmm. I think you can edit stuff out. Oh, you think I'm going to edit that out? You're so sweet. Okay. When is this recording? It's fair game. <laughs> Waves. <laughs> okay. Number two. Yes. The number, this number second reason. <laughs> so the number three reason. No, oh, there's a number three reason. Why well, women <laughs> are is not it, psychopaths. A, when was it a third number? A number C reason, which conveniently rhymes with the number three reason. Okay, so women are like... Can well, I just fill you up rather than <laughs> talk about it, my feelings? Because there's lots of feeling going on then. Yep, my nipple feels that. How many of these reasons are there? This is the last one. <laughs> I'm like, this is the number 4D reason. <laughs> okay. Yeah, with smell and wind. <laughs> oh, wow. Smell and wind. <laughs> I'm like... <laughs> There's someone is experiencing 4D theater <laughs> with smell and wind. <laughs> yes, that's an epic ad. I'm totally going to go to that 4D theater. <laughs> So now we know, we know lots of things. We know that there's a 4D with smell and wind. We know that Meg is hot. She's not with Joan and Sarah sucks in bed and therefore I'm going off Meg. 
He cheats. I, I cheat. This is something interesting and I just discovered. Really? Yes, who would have thought that this one would be ridiculous? Well, it has to do with smell-o-vision. 